Now recently I made this video where we took a look at some new info that has been dropped on the Omega 1 engine. If you didn't see that, go and watch the first and then come back to this one. But in that video I said that I would make a video going more in depth on how exactly this engine will work. If that sounds like a video you would enjoy, leave a like and subscribe, it's free and it helps me out a lot. And it might even make it possible for me to do more type of videos like this where we actually talk to the companies. But back to the actual engine and how it works. So today we will be looking at this video quite a lot and I'll be using it to explain the inner workings of this engine. Cool? So we are going to have to look at this engine in levels. Let's start with the intake part first. So when looking at the engine from the front, this is where the air goes in. Now you will notice that the engine has a really big intake bowl. This is simply to make it easier for the engine to suck up more air. More air in any engine means more power. Now before I go further, just because I know a lot of people are going to comment this, the lobe that moves the air does not touch the sides of the intake chamber. The tolerances are super small, but they don't touch, which helps with the longevity of the engine. And as I said, the tolerances are super small, so the energy lost through the gap is negligible. Now when this engine runs, air goes through the intake, then down through the lower portion of the engine, and then you will see that the air gets compressed into the pre-combustion chamber. When taking the engine apart, you will see that there is a combustion housing between the intake and the exhaust parts. Now as the air moves into the combustion housing, hydrogen is rapidly mixed into the air. Now I will go a bit more in depth on how the hydrogen makes its way into the engine later, but for now, let's stay on the topic of how combustion happens. Now once the compressed air and hydrogen is thoroughly mixed in the pre-chamber, it will start to make its way to the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber, a glow plug will ignite the mixture and combustion will happen. Now again in the combustion chamber, we have super tight tolerances around the side, which means that there is no touching and also minimal energy loss. Now after combustion happens, the exhaust gases get sucked up through a two-stroke like exhaust. You see, the exhaust has a cone shape that goes to a point, and then it slowly tapers down to a smaller end. This means that every time the exhaust gases come rushing out after combustion happens, the exhaust design creates a positive pressure wave which radiates from the exhaust port which literally sucks the air out of the motor. But it doesn't stop there. When burning hydrogen in a combustion engine, you produce NOx. Well, they thought of that too. Oxygen and water vapor is what comes out of the exhaust, and that is drawn back into the intake, working like an EGR. The water vapor and oxygen that gets sucked back into the engine also helps close off the gaps between the rotors in the housings. Liquid is harder to push than air and this liquid then helps create a better seal within the engine. At the end, you are left with almost nothing, except a little water vapor and oxygen. Another thing that helps make sure that there is no bad emissions coming out of the engine is the fact that this engine can run with a homogeneous charge compression ignition, or HCCI. What does this mean? Well, HCCI is a form of internal combustion in which well mixed fuel and an oxidizer typically air, are compressed to a point of auto-ignition. Now in a combustion piston engine, auto-ignition is bad, like engine goes boom bad. Why? Well, if you have pre-ignition, when the piston is on its way up, there is no place for all of that energy to go, and um, well, stuff like this happens. Whereas with this engine, it is designed to run with self-igniting combustions, and ignition can't ever happen at the wrong time. You see, the lower rotor is mechanically timed for ignition, so it will never miss its ignition point, unlike other engines. Why is this good? Well, there are actually many reasons. Since HCCI engines are fuel lean, they can operate at diesel-like compression ratios, thus achieving 30% higher efficiencies than conventional spark ignition gasoline engines. Then, homogeneous mixing of fuel and air leads to a cleaner combustion and lower emissions because peak temperatures are significantly lower than in a typical spark ignition engine. This also means that NOx levels are almost 
negligible. HVCI engines also avoid throttle losses, which further improve efficiency and performance. Then for fueling, like I promised, this engine doesn't use injectors. Instead, it uses the pressure that the hydrogen is stored at to force the hydrogen into the engine. How do they do this? Well, when you store hydrogen in a car, they are normally put in super pressurized hydrogen tanks. Why? Well, in order to keep hydrogen in its liquid state, you need to pressurize it. As a result, these tanks are made to store hydrogen at pressures between 5000 and 10,000 psi. So Astron just uses a fuel pressure regulator and takes the pressurized hydrogen through the regulator and pushes it into the engine at the right times. Pretty smart, since hydrogen injectors are quite expensive. Now, before I end off this video, I did ask the CEO what the liquid was in this video. He said that that was an old and expensive prototype and that the seals that they used for that engine could not keep the oil inside, the front seal bearing housing, and as a result, it pushed some oil out. But he also said that they had fixed the problem and that we will soon see and hear the actual engine running and making power. So if that's something you want to see, um, subscribe because it's coming soon. But for now, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, and if you are excited for everything that is to come on this engine, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.